Now we will see modular n counters or we can also call it divide by n counters. Up to now we have seen three different ways of designing counters. And what was the first way? The first way was using finite state machines. And the second way we can design these counters using adders. And today we will see another way and we will design counters using cascaded flip-flops. Okay, and the first one that we will see is a divide by two counter. So let's see this. Or you can call it modulo two counter. So this is a very simple counter. What we are trying to do in a modulo two counter, you count from zero, one, then you go back to zero, one. So it's like a toggling at each clock cycle, right? And then for this, what we will be doing, we will get this Q0 output and we will connect it back to the D input, right? So this way we will be achieving this behavior, okay? So let's say initially Q is zero, Q0 is one, right? At this clock edge, I will be capturing a one here and this one will be going to the Q output. So this Q will become one until the next edge. So this will now become one and then Q naught will become zero. So now I will be getting a zero here. So on this clock edge, I have a zero at the D input and this zero will be copied to the Q and then I have a zero here. So now I will have a zero here and a one here. So on the next edge, on this clock edge, so I have a one here and this one will go to my Q. So I will have a one here. Okay, so I will have one here and zero here. So this will continue like this. Okay, so, so if you look at this, my clock period was T. Let's say this is my T. And if I look at the period of my Q signal, right? So this is my period for the Q signal. I got 2T, right? In a way, my frequency for this clock was F. Then the frequency of my Q is F over 2. So what I did achieve, I achieved a divide by 2, right? So I divided my input clock frequency by 2, right? So basically my output is toggling between 0, 1, 0, 1. So this is a modulo 2 counter, right? So, and the idea here is using this, the inverted Q as a feedback to my data input. So let's look at this divide by 4 or modulo 4 counter. So in this case, we will be cascading our flip-flops, right? So this is my clock signal, right? What I will be doing first, I will be taking this Q naught and giving it back to the my D input okay and I will be getting this Q and I will be using it as a clock to my second flip-flop okay so this is important let me do it with different color so this will be going to the clock of my second flip-flop and let's say this is my Q2 knot this is my Q2 this is my Q1 and this is my Q1 knot now we can take this Q2 knot and connect it to the input of second flip-flop. Okay, and this will be my Q2. Let's call this one QA and I will be calling this one QB. So this QA and QB are my counter outputs, okay? So this QB is the most significant bit of my counter and QA is my least significant bit. Okay, and then let's try to look at the waveform. So this is my QA, right? We already seen this in the previous design, right? So this is a divided by two output in a way. So this QA is coming from Q1, not actually, right? Let's also draw our Q1. So Q1 will be just the inverse of this QA, right? So this Q1 actually is a clock for the second flip-flop. And then let's first find Q2. Okay. Q2 is initially zero, right? So initially we assume we reset it our flip-flops and initially it is zero. So I will be looking at the rising edge of Q1. So on this rising edge, Q2 is getting not of Q2. So Q2 was initially zero and Q2 naught was initially one. So this will become a one here and then it will become zero here, 
one here, zero here, one here, zero here. So this is my Q2. So my QB, which is the Q2 knot, right? So it will become one here, zero here, right? So this is my modulo four counter. Okay, so here my clock frequency is F. And then frequency of QA is F over 2. And then if I look at here, this is my QB. The frequency of QB is the half of QA, which is F over 4, right? So in this way, I was able to get a divide by 4 counter. So in a way, this is a clock divider. But actually, you can just use this for very simple circuits in reality we will be using phase lock loops pll's for clock division or clock multiplication in the real applications we will be using this pll but for very trivial circuits you might use this dividers for your clock since clock is a special signal they require special circuits such as pll for clock division or multiplication if you need it in your circuit so we can say this is f over 2 and this is f over 4 actually. Also let's look at the output values of a 3 bit counter. Let's say the output of my counter is q2, q1 and q0. So this is my all possible outputs. So what we see here q0 toggles every cycle. But if you look at q1 it is toggling every 2 cycle. Right so the frequency of this is every two cycle and if you look at q2 it is toggling every four right so if the frequency of this is f if i use q1 this will be f over two if i use this it will be f over four in a way you can use the counter bits as a clock divider right so that's why the counters could be also used as a divide by and circuits okay so let's look at modulo 16 or divide by 16 counter so in this case we will be extending the same idea right so one flip-flop will give me divide by 2 if i cascade it by another one then i will get divide by 4 and if i use three flip-flops i can get divide by 8 and if i use four flip-flops then i can get divide by 16 counter right so at every stage i am dividing my frequency by two if you look at this this is zero 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 so first cycle in the next cycle i have zero 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 one in the next cycle i have zero zero one zero and then i have zero zero one one right so this is counting so we have a zero here one here two here three here and four here right so you can use this as a counter or you can use it as a divide by an circuit and then you will go to up to 15 right after 15 then you will go back to zero and then count again 